the Fred Allen Show. Judge for yourself. Thank you very much. Thank you. Somebody lost a dog in the studio, I'm afraid. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good evening, ladies. Uh, you couldn't lose anything in here, actually. But uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to A Judge for Yourself. Now, I'm very sorry that I have no opening remarks tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I tell you, I did have some hilarious uh, comments prepared, but unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to use them tonight, and I'll tell you why, confidentially. Now, last a week, as we know, for six days, New York City was smothered in a blanket of smog. And uh, it was uh, very bad, as, as uh, we all experienced. The planes were grounded, motorists couldn't drive their cars. Uh, visibility was so uh, poor that uh, people who were going into pet shops couldn't buy a peek, actually. And Sunday, <laughs> Sunday, a sly thing, just testing. <laughs> Uh, Sunday, the New York Times came out and said that the smog was going to last until Tuesday, until tonight of our show, you see. So I got busy right away collecting smog jokes, you know, to be ready for tonight for the topical things like uh, Gary, uh, Gary Moore, Gary Moore, and Arthur Godfrey, all the topical jokes that they tell. And I really had some pretty good uh, smog jokes. Uh, one of them was, uh, uh, Friday it was so dark, that 40 people went into the Western Union in the daytime and, so, and send night letters. That was just a sort of an opening one, a little titter to see what would happen, to sort of feel the audience out. And then I had another joke. It said, the air is so heavy that people in New York have more coal in their lungs than they have in their cellars. <laughs> and this was just to let you rest from the first joke, you see, a sort of a lull that I purposely had inserted in there. And then another joke that I, <laughs> I have no control over the lulls, unfortunately. But uh, another uh, uh, smog joke was about the man up in the Bronx who, who uh, released the carrier pigeon to fly over to Jersey City. And later in the night, he received a bill for $77.55. It seems that it couldn't see to fly over to Jersey City, so the carrier pigeon had taken a taxi cab. But I was all set. I would just give a sample. I, it's, luckily, uh, things happened the way they did. I can see now. But uh, I was all set with all of these smog uh, jokes, ladies and gentlemen. And yesterday, the rain came, the smog disappeared, and here I am sitting tonight holding the gag, as it were. But, uh, of course, we won't have our hilarious uh, opening as we usually have. Uh, we've changed for tonight, as you've sensed. And uh, we'll just start off with Judge for Yourself, our usual show, and here's how it works. These three studio judges were selected from the mail and invited here tonight to test their skill at judging talent. Miss Roberta Marks, a sales girl. Mr. Katz, a waiter. Mr. Charles Dempsey, who runs a bartending school. They can win $2,000 if they rate tonight's acts in the same order as this distinguished jury of show business experts. One of the great names in the American theater, Mr. Eddie Dowling. One of Tin Pan Alley's top music men, Mr. Johnny Mercer. The radio and television editor of Billboard, Mr. Sam Chase. And that's our board of experts. Well, I certainly I want to welcome our experts tonight, ladies and gentlemen, and hope they will enjoy their short visit with us for the next uh, 28 minutes and 32 seconds, I'm advised, at the moment. Now, our first uh, uh, judge tonight who's going to try to judge the talent is Mr. Charles Dempsey. Will you sit down, Mr. Dempsey, please? <laughs> now, you probably have identified Mr. Dempsey. You've perhaps seen him before, ladies and gentlemen. And if you have, you saw him last week on our show. Because Mr. Dempsey was so busy uh, interviewing me that I had no opportunity to interview him. So we're going to start over uh, tonight again and have another go at it. You are here prepared, are you, Mr. Dempsey? That's right, Fred. It gives me a great pleasure of coming back. Well, thank you very much. Now, did I give you some go old goals last week? You did sure I? did, but I'd like to have another pack. You. <laughs> well, uh, all right. I said it is Thanksgiving week. I'll give you another pack of thank the you. regular size. Now, uh, Mr. Uh, tonight, I, uh, uh, last week, uh, Mr. Dempsey, you used up all of your time uh, telling me about a vaudeville act, Tom and Dolly Ward. Two lovely people, and I remember them way back 
You think they did, huh? They were very good entertainers, and I... Now, wait, now, wait. Just a minute, just a minute, Mr. Dempsey. That's how we got involved in that routine last week. <laughs> but you said at that time that you were the president of the International School for Bartenders. That's, that, that's, that's true. That's I recall that. my mind is still functioning, isn't it? Your school is here in the city, is it? 200 West 24th Street. 200, uh, that's downtown, isn't it? That's right. Now, your bartender college doesn't use the Bowery for a campus, does no, it? No, not at all. I, uh, I just, just wanted to make sure. I think I have seen some of your old grads relaxing in doorways down there. <laughs> Well, tell me now, what does a uh, what does a bartender learn at your school, Mr. Well, Dempsey? Well, every everything in regards of bartending, how to handle people, how to take care of himself in back of a bar, uh -huh. the real proper way. How to uh, ring up the cash register when the boss is not around. That also. <laughs> no, just to get the money for the boss. Oh, I see. Well, how long is the course? It takes four weeks. Four weeks. That's Always. all you have. You don't That's have any uh, sports or anything like no. that. No. Do you pass out? Uh, do you pass out degrees, a B.A., Bachelor of Alcohol, or anything? Like that? No, Ted. But I'll tell you what we do. We give them a beautiful gold uh, diploma with a beautiful red ribbon on it. Oh, oh, you do? Oh, yeah. Really? They gotta get that. Well, I thought you might have. A, I thought you might have a bouncer who heaves the student, the graduating student, out through the swinging doors, so that no. he would realize that he's on his own when he's through with the school. <laughs> well, it's certainly been nice uh, talking to you. We had a little more time tonight, didn't we, Mr. Dempsey? Thank Dancy? you. I appreciate it. I might bring you, uh, uh, if you bring me back next week, maybe we'll talk again. <laughs> but uh, 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 the time has now come for you to test your skill at judging talent. We're going to show you our first act, and you can judge for yourself. Now, this first act is a young singer named Luis Pichardo. He was discovered in Cuba and brought to the United States by H.C.O. Pinza. Now, this is... Uh, Louise, uh, first television debut. Uh, old Gold is happy to present Mr. Pichardo. You're going to enjoy it. Granada, tierra soñada por mí. Mi cantar se vuelve gitano cuando es para ti. Mi cantar hecho de pan es así. Cantar flor de melancolía que yo te vengo a dar. Granada, tierra ensangrentada, en tarde de sol. Mujer que conserva el embrujo de los ojos moros. De sueño rebelde y gitana cubierta de flores. Y beso tu boca de grana, tu boca manzana que me habla de amor. Granada, Manola cantada en coplas preciosas. No tengo otra cosa que darte que un ramo de rosa. De rosas de suave fragancia que le dieran marco a la Virgen Morena. de sangre y de sol. ¡Y ole! Es Luis Pichardo, ladies and gentlemen. And here is our next studio judge, Mr. Katz. Mr. Katz, welcome to our show. We want you to have a... A carton of old golds with our compliments for your smoking pleasure. 
I, now, uh, <laughs> Mr. Katz, uh, tonight, of course, you may win $2,000. If you can rate the, uh, the acts uh, in the proper order, do you think you can do that? If I'll be lucky enough to win. If you're lucky enough? I'll, so I'll be satisfied. Well, you'll be satisfied <laughs> if you win. You won't be disappointed if you lose by any no, chance. Not, not a bit. Well, tell me, have you, do you, want, you know talent, of course. What shows are your favorites on television? Well, I uh, like Groucho Marx. Groucho Marx, a competitor, yeah. And Red Button. Red Button, yes. yes uh -huh. um, Abe Schreiner is all right, too. Abe Schreiner is very good. <laughs> The network, isn't he? Abe yes. He comes on uh, right after Jakey Gleason. Right. <laughs> well, uh, Mr. Katz, you are a waiter in a restaurant. I know this restaurant uh, must have a name, uh, doesn't it? it has... Did you ever see a restaurant without a name? <laughs> well, it's a high grade restaurant. Oh, the high grade uh, is a dairy restaurant, isn't well, it? Well, I didn't give you the address yet. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, you didn't give me the address. All right, go ahead. 128, 140. Well, you don't know where it is. <laughs> you want to send me? 149 West 28th Street, East 7th Avenue. Uh -huh. It's a dairy restaurant. Well, they haven't moved since you came up to the program. <laughs> yes. Well, I didn't realize I was interest, uh, in, uh, interrupting a commercial, Mr. Katz. That's I'm right. sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Right. It might be on wheels, the restaurant, that's too. Right. No, well, that's there, no. It isn't on wheels. Well, it's, it's, it's uh, 30 years already. 30 years, uh, not, 50 on, 50. Not, on, not on wheels. Not on wheels. Well, good. Well, now that's not going anyplace, then, is not it? Not yet. Well, now I know where the high-grade restaurant is. I may come down there sometime. How, how is the food, confidentially? Well, I work there. It has to be good. Oh, it has to well, be good. Well, you can't expect <laughs> I shall say it's no good when I work there. Oh, well, no, naturally. Yeah, actually, you know how it is. Well, you were... <laughs> you have taken a oil, uh, loyalty oath, have you, to the... Uh... <laughs> have you sworn not to repeat anything a tongue may say on the premises? <laughs> well, yeah. well, by the way, tell you, you have a... I've been saying Mr. Katz. You have a first name, of course. Actually, but who hasn't got no first name? <laughs> Ellen. <laughs> Alex is your name. Alex Katz. Yes. Alex Katz. Well, do your customers call you Alex? No, Mr. Katz. I call them Mr. and they call me Mr. Katz. Oh, I see. Yes, your, your dairy is very formal then, the restaurant. That's right. <laughs> the herrings are in tails, too. <laughs> Uh, Zook me, Mr. Cass. Yes, sir. <laughs> what are some of the delicacies listed on the menu at high grade? Well, I haven't got no menu. You haven't a menu? On my table, especially, I, I don't keep no menu. So I give the customers to eat, but I need, but I see it's good for them. Oh, I see. <laughs> well, suppose the customer doesn't like what you give him. So let him get up and go to a different table where there's bill of <laughs> Is you suddenly make a cafeteria out of this place. Not yet, but... Uh, That's possible. possible. But if you... <laughs> if you are in the mood, then, and you do serve a customer, what can he have? That's according... Uh, we have every day different food. Oh, different food. Uh, today we'll have, like, uh, halibut, uh -huh. yorgen, blintzes. Blintzes? Yes. Tell me, what would you... Could you explain what a blintzer is? Not a blintzer, blintzes. Oh, blintzes. <laughs> Cheap, it's cheap. Wait a minute, now. Wait a minute, I'll explain you. Well, I, I know you, what a blintzer is. Do you eat in a restaurant? Yes, I do. And you didn't know what you don't I, know what a blintzer is. I know what a blintzer is. It's no. pot cheese in an envelope. I know what it is. It's fried, yeah. Yes. And I, I said blintz the thing because you said red button, and I thought you talked in the singular, That's and right. I, I didn't want it. Well, now the time... You got two is, buttons, all right. Two <laughs> buttons, all right. All right. Well, now the time for you to test your skill as a judge, Mr. Cash. That's We're right. going to show you our next act, Tony Lavelli. Now, Tony became famous at first as first as an all-American basketball player for U Yale University. And since that time, he's been building a musical career for himself, uh, playing the accordion in clubs and theaters around the country. And here he is, you'll enjoy him, Tony Lavelli. And
next uh, studio judge to judge our talent tonight, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Roberta Marks. Miss Marks, with our compliments, we want you to have a carton of old gold cigarettes. Thank you just you. heard uh, Dennis speak about them, and I'm sure you'll enjoy them. I will. Now, in your letter, uh, Miss Marks, you say that you are a sales girl in a men's shop. Is yeah. the shop here in New York City? No, it isn't. Uh, it's Jack Henry's. That's on the Country Club Plaza in Kansas City, Missouri. In Kansas City, Missouri. That's right. And you are the only girl working in the store? Well, I'm the only single girl. We've got about 20 salesmen. Believe me, I take quite a kidding. In the store, In huh? the store. What do they kid you about? Well, for example, every now and then, uh, a customer will come in and they'll say, where's Miss Marks? Uh -huh. Some salesmen will say, oh, Miss Marks, she's in men's underwear. <laughs> I, uh... <laughs> You're not related to Groucho, Miss Marks, no, by any no, chance, no, are you? <laughs> well, tell me, did you ever have any amusing experiences as a woman working in a men's store? Oh, all the time. You Just, do? Just, uh, uh, last week, a very distinguished woman came in, and she said, uh, I'd like to see something very exciting in men's pajamas. I said, well, I'd be glad to sell you the pajamas, but you'll have to go out and find your own excitement. Oh. <laughs> You don't need a television in that store, do you? You could, uh, well, tell me, Miss Marks, your store, you say, is in Kansas City, Missouri. Right. Has uh, Harry Truman ever bought any of your haberdashery? Not to my knowledge. He hasn't, huh? I don't think so. He hasn't opened up for himself again, has he, around there? No, he probably does all of his shopping with his ex-partner. Uh, Eddie Jacobson, who... Oh, is his partner store. still in business He's there? in business. Good. Well, I heard a rumor that Harry is going in for bright colors this season. He's had so much trouble with white lately. <laughs> and, uh, I just sort of threw that in because it sort of needed company to go with itself. Uh, well, it's certainly been nice talking to you, and now the time has come to you, for you to try to uh, judge your, your talent, uh, judge, uh, try your skill at judging talent. I'll get the... Uh, when I find out what show I'm on, I'll say the thing. <laughs> We're going to show you our next act, uh, Miss Marks, and you can judge for yourself. Now, our next performers are three sitters, sisters who first got their start on a three sitters. That's fine, isn't it? <laughs> well, they're going to stand up tonight for the performance, though. Who first got their start on a talent show sponsored by Old Gold several years ago. And here they are, the Woodside Sisters. Thank you very much. Time now for the experts to rate tonight's acts one, two, and three. If any of our studio judges can rate the acts in exactly the same order as the experts, he will win $2,000. If there is more than one winner, the studio judges will share the prize. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let us see how our studio judges have rated our talent tonight. Now, first, 
Uh, Miss Marks, I see that your list has been completed. Tell me, how have you rated our talent one, two, and three? No, well, my first choice is Luis Pichardo. Uh huh. My second choice, the Woodside Sisters. Uh huh. And my third choice is Tony Lavelli. Luis Pichardo, the Woodside Sisters, and Tony Lavelli. Well, thank you very much. And Mr. Katz, tell me, how have you rated our talent tonight? One, two, and three. Luis Pichardo, choice number one. Uh huh. Woodside Sisters. Number two, uh -huh. and Tony Lavalli, number three. Louis Pichardo, Woodside Pichardo, Sisters. Pichardo, I said. Well, I know. <laughs> you changed the name of your restaurant, too, right. you know. I'm not going along with you now. And Tony Lavalli. All right, thank you very much. Under any other name, Mr. Katz, I might change your name before you're through here. Okay. Mr. Dempsey, tell us how have you rated the acts, one, two, and three? The, the Woodside Sisters first. Uh huh. Louis Pichardo, second. Uh huh. Tony Lavelli, third. Woodside Sisters, Louis Pichardo, and Tony Lavelli. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Dempsey. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let us see if any of our studio judges has matched our experts' finding. Uh, Mr. Mercer, I believe that you are the spokesman of the small group there. Well, Fred, our first choice is Louis Pichardo. Louis, Louis Pichardo. Such a first. fine appearance and has such a great voice. He sang such a great song, we uh, think. Uh huh. Well, the Woodside Sisters, second. Second, uh, yes. They seem to know so much about uh, what they're doing as far as the uh, props and things, and they're so attractive. Yeah. And Mr. Lavelli, because he handles the accordion almost as well as he handles the basketball. Well, thank you very much. The results on our scoreboard show that the studio judges who match the experts are Mr. Katz and Miss Roberta Marks, and they divide $2,000. <laughs> Well, congratulations, Miss Marks and Mr. Katz. The makers of Old Gold Cigarettes are certainly happy to give you our $2,000 prize tonight. Congratulations. I guess the time has all run out, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you next Tuesday night. Good night, and see you next.